There we go. Right, just mute him for a second. Yeah. Right, chaps, if you've just clicked on this video, this is basically a, um, a stream of doing some driver tuition with Tom Bingham of Performance Link. Um, he's uh, running in a GT Championship in either the Pro-Am or Am class, I can't quite remember. But either way, he's enlisted me just to give him a bit of a run around for an hour or, s or whatever it takes on Alton Park in the McLaren GT3. So it's going to get messy. So I'm just on my way to join his hosted session now. And then the format of the session will pretty much be, we'll do a few laps to get comfy. I'll start to follow him, start to pick out areas where I think there's the biggest disparity. We'll probably also um, use VRS, Virtual Racing School Online Telemetry Analyzing, which is so super easy and so insightful. And that will really help him understand where he needs to adjust. So. This stream is here so that folks can look back and see how how I typically do this because I used to do it with my teammate Dean Powell quite a lot who you might have heard a few times on the racing streams but after a certain point he just didn't need it anymore and uh, he's he's got the picture. So hopefully we should end this stream with Tom Bingham being able to confidently attack Alton, hopefully put a good time up there in qualifying and that then leads him to get a better race result which knock-on effects will hopefully mean what are you doing knock-on effects means he hopefully finishes well in his am championship or wins it outright there is only so much that a good setup can give you and there's only so much of it practicing by yourself can give you sometimes you just need a second pair of eyes to say look this corner in particular you're just flat out doing it wrong or your technique means that you're doing one thing in a way that can be improved you just need somebody to say you ain't doing quite as good as you could be and this is how you can be so that's the aim of this session and I also get to sample a car I don't usually get to drive the McLaren the cranky old OAP GT3 car that should really be replaced by now. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's start talking to him again and um, watch along if you want. Right, I'm back. I am back in, in action. Right, I'm on the server. Um, have you got a setup that you wanted to start off with as a baseline? Yeah, I'll send it to you. Oh uh, yeah, uh, or share or it on the share it yeah, share it on the I on the um, in in app. That's the race one. Yep. And oh, there's an Alton. Yeah, it's nice. It feels pretty good, actually. All right. It's a. Did VRS actually do an Alton setup? It must have at some point. Yeah. Oh blimey. Yeah. Uh, share to. And that's the quality. Okay. Let's start with a race setup then to essentially just get comfy, get a baseline, because um, this is new to me too. That yep. I say newish, this combination is, is not one I've done before, so it's going to take a little while to warm up to the McLaren, and then we just see what feels best, what feels worst, and then what we can do about it. Yep, so let's get, let's get going. Just do some laps. If you crash, just pit, and I'll pit with you. Okay, sounds good. Right. So we're now doing some. Oh! Slow pit lane at Alton. This should be fun. I do love the Wyndham McLaren sounds, at least. Nice tubular V8 noise. Oh, it's quite tail happy, isn't it? Oh, 
Oh, it's got such character, this, isn't it? Oh, it's a great car. It actually pulls out the corners really well for a uh, rear rear-wheel drive. It's probably because most of the weight it feels like it's over the rear because it's got yeah. such a big such a big boot. That's the way it feels. It feels as if the front wheels are really tiny and the back wheels are just huge. Until you drive it at Watkins Glen and then it feels the yeah. other way around. Yeah. Right, you've been driving a McLaren in the league a few times. Do you know uh, how how quickly do you reckon it takes to wake up and feel stable, or does it feel like that straight out of the um, box for you? One lap. Cool. Yeah, after one lap, it's pretty much good to go. All right, that's what I'm noticing. Yeah, it's not like. Um it's not like the bigger beamers or anything like that that seems to take a bit longer. Also, just as an aside, if you are watching and you want to watch this stream from Tom's point of view, just have a look at the have a look on YouTube for the account performance link. Should be live there if you're just interested in seeing it from his point of view. Got good uh, brakes as well. Yes. Well, it has to have its benefits. Yeah, doesn't have many. You get the bravery award. And also, Tom hasn't paid for this session or anything like that. We just we've crossed paths before in previous leagues, and um, he just asked for a question, and I kind of fancied it. We have already done a session like this before, but I only recorded it, and I never got round to splicing that session. It was at Sebring as well, and he did come out with a distinct improvement. It would have been good, but yeah, it just takes time. It takes time to chop these things up and make them ready, and it just never made top of the list. Andy said it's the uh, Alton is the official this week for GT3s. Well, that's helpful then, because you don't even need to fish around for an appropriate setup. You already know you've got one ready to go, but I can s I predict some tweaks. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Because even for me, it's quite knife edge. Yeah, but if it's hard to drive for you, then it'll be a nightmare for me. Well, it's all about how you typically tend to approach it. It might be no no trouble at all, but that'll be for that'll be for you to tell me. So when you when you've got the groove and you feel like there's some way in which you'd like it to be less extreme, we can work on that. Yeah, sounds good. And you got your VR, uh, VRS telemetry logger active. It's on at the moment, yeah. Good day. I clicked it, so it should be. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Being on a track day with. Um, with some uh, famous names. Now, if you know me, you know that basically the Ferrari 488 is my right hand. And the McLaren feels... the same but different. It's definitely a little bit sketchy on the brakes. Yeah. I'm Can't find too deep with it. finding it it's quite um, loose on exit. Yeah, it but needs it, a few uh, few tweaks for sure. Yeah, it takes a while to get to know it, but uh, it's feeling a lot better than the first lap. I 
desperately want to go as fast as I can. I'm only just leading the championship, like only just. Consistency is going to be uh, your best weapon here. If you. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we end up with after a few more laps, but it's starting to come alive a bit now. Starting to kind of understand it. Yeah, so yeah, consistency. That's why I chose the McLaren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think? At least it made it interesting. Yeah, you know, you get a bit more stream time that way. Every lap, they're like, "Oh, he hasn't crashed yet." Oh, he hasn't yeah. yet. i got to admit, that is why I clicked the other day. I just thought, okay, this should be good. Yeah. Now, the way I see it is that there is, there's a shoe that fits pretty much everybody. you just got to, you just got to try it. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I so desperately want to enjoy the other GT3s, but every time I get in that Ferrari, I'm just half a second quicker all the time. Uh, it just suits your style, I guess. Yeah, even when it wasn't sort of, you know, the, the prime thing to be in. All right, Rahul. I think there's going to be a lot of crashes around here in the race. Yeah, it's going to be a bit bit of a worry because you might end up putting it's, it's one hour single session in it yeah it's the only worry in it you put you put in real effort and it's in the bin qualifying is going to be important yeah I don't know if it's um I hope it's uh, lone qualifying it might be it might not be Lewis, my only tip for you, mate, is... I never seem to find the correct line for turn one round here. My tip for you is... I'm always, like, not sure. Is do it... Uh, plug it in on a Friday. Which is tomorrow. Oh, you won't get it in time. Yeah, plug it in on a Friday, because otherwise you're not going to get to bed in time. You're just going to be glued to it. I love mine. Telling me, actually, I can just ask him: Is it closed poly or open poly, Andy? That'd be an easier way to find out. He should know. Yeah, but he set the session up, so. Are you doing much um, Apex at the moment, Danny? Or uh, I've not touched any Apex leagues in ages. Um, the league I'm in at the minute is basically the last one I think I'm going to be in for a while because of uh, other commitments. Ah, uh, right. Um, so I'll just have to be a bit more granular, you know, fit it around. Yeah, I know. But we never mean. know. We never know. Um, I'm in the sim game in a GT3 league in a minute, which is kind of like, kind of like how ARL used to be, but in another sort of home. It's got that kind of feeling. And so far, yeah, it's been you. very, very fun. So, uh, loving it. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Apex has been pretty good. There doesn't seem to be too much of the, um, of the grief that there was in that one GCE season. Oh, nothing can last forever. Things come and go. New crop comes in, new class. Yeah, definitely. And he said it's open quality. Ah, that's going to be quite interesting then. Well, the toe's not going to make. Oh damn it! Toe's not going to make any difference here, is it? If not really. No, clear air is going to be your your friend here. Yeah. It's going to be quite difficult to overtake here, I think. Um, but there are definitely some 
There's some crowbars and there's some. Ah, uh, it's a. I came up with this the other day. How, how can I forget? Every track's got a few little gaps that you can put a crowbar in to sort of give yourself a proper chance. There are a yeah. couple here, but you've got to really hassle them to make it happen. I think. Yeah. But it's possible. I was wondering if it's more about putting people under pressure until they make mistakes. It will be, 100%. Which is a good thing. Jesus, it's loose around there. Using a turn racing R320 rim on a Fanatec podium hub assembly. There's a video on that quite somewhat recently, so look at, look through my library and you'll see one that says completing the Fanatec GT3 wheel build. It's sort of a two-parter because I didn't know what rim was going to go on it when I made the first R. Take you to get a good at iRacing, Danny. Um, you know what? I joined in 2010. A while then. Yeah, joined in 2010, and I discovered iRacing in the last quarter of 2010, and I think I did about 300 races, just literally back to back every spare minute I had because I was so addicted to it. It was just so fun. Yeah. So so fun. Just loved it. And then there was a bit of a hiatus after 2012. 2010 and 2012 were like the power years, but just had a basic setup back then, as did everybody in back then. There was a long hiatus, maybe did like one, two. If I look back through my stats, it's, it, it um, tells a story. After 2012, I kind of just focused on work and the career and whatnot, because I thought it was kind of the dream was dead, in a way. Yeah. And then just a big resurgence in um, in 2020 after getting this this kit, just the Fanatec kit. It's like, why the hell didn't I do this earlier? Yeah, I'm kind of glad that I got my um, direct drive sooner rather than later. Yeah. Because I'm just enjoying, I just enjoy it so much more. That is how it is. It's almost as if it's a completely different. It's a completely different hobby. Yeah. It's like... The, the direct drive wheels, you have to respect them. You know, it, they can actually hurt you. It's not a... It goes from being a toy to being a simulator, basically. It's... It's a bit like if, you, if you're into mountain biking and you're using like a 10-year-old bike, like a hardtail bike, and you go into places like... I don't know. For you, it's the closest one for you. It's probably like Forest of Dean or something like that. Yeah, it's a completely bike. different ball game if you then get a, a modern bike, full suspension, every all the bells and whistles. It's just uh, so fun. But you got to start somewhere. I know. Um, I know how that feels actually, because I had a. Uh, I bought a hey, Kev. a few years back. I thought like a decent carbon full sus one. Yeah. And the bike I had before that was like a hard tail DDG, and that was like 20 years ago. And the diff oh, a bit wide. And the difference was insane, you know. Yeah, technology moves on. It's it's bonkers how bikes now are just. If you took a bike that you can buy now and took it back in time 20 years, people would be like, "What the heck is this?" Yeah, all these but assisted bikes as well. That's how it, how time moves on. Yeah. Right. Found the groove. Okay. I think we um I think we're definitely in the groove anyway. Yeah, just carry on lapping normally. Uh the longer the better really because it shows that you can do it consistently. 
and you know where the trouble spots are. Yeah, I'm finding a bit of looseness into here. Just trying to trail break gently into there. Oh, a bit too tight. Not too bad that time. It's definitely too loose around this left hand there. Yeah. I'm not sure that it should be fourth or fifth. You can do fifth, but it's just, I don't know, it feels a bit sketchy. Like right there, like that. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Well, uh, what I'm finding is that uh, I think it's loose in different areas than than you've okay. reported. So that says that we've got a, a slightly different approach to things. But we can take the best of both. So the things that you find easy and the things that I find easy. Okay. For example, that, yeah, the, the, le the fast left sweeper. Don't know, what, don't know what the name is. I'm just going to cut the course to catch up with you. In fact, so you're at the pit lane now, or? Yeah, I'm just, I'm literally just okay. holding out the end. Yeah. Oh, oh well, I've got no choice now, because I uh, idly clip the grass without thinking about it. Right, I'm coming out of the pits. Uh, <laughs> All good. Yeah, coming out. All right, Kev, how's it going? Okay, so we're on equal terms again. So, yeah, just uh, give it a good lap. And just drive out, drive like you would in a race sesh. Yeah, just pretend that you're not behind me. Yeah. See my awful tyre marks going into the barrier. That's fair for motivation. <laughs> yeah. I'll try and go fast. Like well, my version of fast yeah. Anyway. Ease it in. At some point, guys that are viewing, at some point we're going to crack open VRS uh, lap data and see where the differences are between mine and Tom's kind of attitude toward the car. Because in, in the McLaren, more than anything else, everybody knows it's a blooming murderer. More than any other car, it really matters how you the philosophy towards every corner. What you do? I just tap the tyres. The uh, steering's still straight there. Looks alright for me, yeah. There's always someone quicker than you, doesn't matter who you are. And um, oh, yeah. it's it's good to take a lesson from them. But it, I think every, there's, people are just built for these things, it seems. They just have an, an innate ability. It's almost like they just have, you know, just a 2% quicker perception of time, but it gives them that edge. Yeah. A bit like how a fly sort of perceives time slower. You know, they've got, they've got fly brains. So they can just do whatever they want and somehow react to it. Not like my goldfish brain. 
Uh, goldfish pretty nimble. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's true. I almost feel like seconds better through there. That was a pretty good sex of that. Thank you all. Good lap time, nonetheless. Oh, a bit too much. <laughs> it lures you in, doesn't it? Just pulls you in. Well, I'll finish this lap and then I'll slot back in. Okay. McLaren looks good in that orange. Um, I think it's uh, the default factory out of the box colour. Oh, I think I've picked it to be that because that was how it is. IRL. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, tsh. always on the last corner, isn't it? Yeah. It's almost like because it's off camber and downhill, it uh, just doesn't grip as much as you expect. What are we looking at here? Yeah, it's definitely quite tail uh, heavy because the brake bias is basically in favour of the rear. So we're talking somewhere between uh, uh, Ferrari and a Porsche here. That's why it's a little bit uh, murdery. Yeah, when it, the trouble is when it starts to go, it's hard to get back. Like, I mean, you can catch, well, my ability, you can catch little bits, but if it really wants to go, you just can't do anything about it. Feels fun round here though. Yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a fun race at least. Yeah, definitely. Right, this is a serious lap time attempt now. I think I've got the. I think I've cracked it. Okay. But I want it to be kind of like a uh, representative lap rather than just a fluky, freaky one off fast one. Yeah. No, I understand.
I just don't get how you're carrying more, so much more speed. You know? It's because I greased up the door handle so that when it leans over and scrapes on the tarmac, it doesn't <laughs> slow down as much. You've deployed your little aero uh, package. I beg your pardon. There is literally nothing between those lap times, so you're already on a good basis. Whoa. I think this is more about consistency more than anything else. What yeah. happened there? I drifted the whole corner. <laughs> <laughs> I clipped the grass as I uh, was entering. So initially then, what would you like it not to do so much? Obviously it's a bit sketchy in some places, but what's the pattern? Um, I feel like it's quite good everywhere apart from that one apart from that one fast left hander. The rest of it feels alright actually. Now I've kinda of got used to it. It's not Get too out. like it's manageable, you know? Yeah. I'm used to it being a bit sketchy, so I I'm just I try and be careful like accelerating out and I try and trail brake carefully, you know? Yes, as much as it can ask. Upset. Yeah, try not to upset the balance too much. Okay, I'll have a look at that fast left sweeper. Um, if you come into the pits, because okay. it won't it won't upload your stint until you come in. Okay, I'll just uh, come to a stop. And then I'll have a look and see if there's an explanation for it. I'll have, a, I'll have a quick cycle through some laps. In the meantime, um, do a couple more laps. Maybe even on a quali set. Okay. And I'll uh, come back to you in a minute or two. Yeah, sounds good, mate. Quali. Just muting temporarily. Yeah, no worries. All right. So we've done a few laps. Tom's lap time, his ultimate lap time is actually really good. As in the best, the best lap time he posted was a was only a smidge away from mine when it really came down to it. So what we want to do is we're going to be looking at VRS. We're going to compare my telemetry against Tom's telemetry and just see why why there might be a feeling of sketchiness in certain corners for fast left sweeper for one. So, well, hopefully my stint has uh, loaded up as well. Alright, so it's uploading. I'm just going to... This is, this is Virtual Racing School, by the way. Wonderful app. So, so good. I hasn't uploaded your stints. Did you come in on a... Did you... It hasn't uploaded your stint. So did you change setup or did you carry on? Just out of the pits. Uh, I changed the setup. Before okay. I went back out. Fair enough. But it should have uploaded then. It has uploaded the one you, that you put in 17 minutes ago. So maybe it just needs a minute. Oh. Uh. Found it literally just said upload succeeded. I opened up the file. Oh, okay, yeah, we got it. I think upload succeeded. Upload succeeded, and another one. Yeah, that's it. I reckon that's doing it. Okay, cool. I'll leave that window open a little bit. Yeah, just to see if that's uh, what the issue was. Yeah, I think that's done it. Right, back in a moment. Oh, so we're using. Virtual Racing School to compare my lap to Tom's. Okay, still uploading.
Ah, it's uploading each lap. Fair enough. Come on. There's 19 laps worth of data, and we're on 16. Oh no. Yeah, it's done it for me. Right, let's get to it. So I'm clicking into the session, clicking into my telemetry, and we want to do the the latest one, 32947. That was a pretty representative lap time, so we're going to be Analyze session. So we can the target session I'm going to set as Tom Bingham. Today's session and the fastest lap that he did was a 32.951, and then compare that against me. The fastest available lap is a 32.947. So what that will do now is it will load the telemetry for Alton. And we'll see where, on that particular lap at least, we can learn from each other here because Tom's much more experienced in McLaren than me and you cannot discount experience, experience matters in something like this okay So the one observation I'm seeing here from, at least from the fast lap, is that Tom backs out of a throttle, but also keeps keeps it backed out for longer. Now I'm wondering whether or not the McLaren, in a typical car you'd sort of, yeah, you'd, you'd straddle the throttle halfway through a tricky section, but I think the McLaren, because it's so, because it's so rear, it's so rearward, it probably needs a bit a bit more of a heavy hand especially when you're going at speed so you're in fifth gear I think that half throttle is not enough in fifth gear in first gear yeah great but in fifth gear half throttle probably doesn't do enough so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna I'm gonna look back through some other laps and see if that behavior is still there as well because we want to identify whether or not whether or not Tom habitually goes through that corner with half throttle because that's what you would expect to need to do in any other car so here we go again then analyze session select session the next fastest one Uh, against against that fastest lap that I posted. So now we're comparing another of Tom's laps against me. And yeah, we can see that Tom does. He's got this... Our approach to that corner is completely different, is what I'm trying to say. Is what I'm trying to basically say without murdering the sentence over and over again our approach to that section, that fast swooping section that feels really horrid is that he never backs out the throttle all the way but he also stays out of the throttle for a longer time and I think that 
at that speed you kind of need to be at almost full throttle if not at full throttle to to justify it let's see what gears we're doing it in as well because that can make a difference so he's doing it in fifth I'm doing it in fourth that's the major difference he's doing it in fifth and only doing part throttle which means he has even less torque so you know how I said earlier on that half throttle isn't enough at speed well if you're doing half throttle in a higher gear then yeah it won't have as much power to stabilize the rear as being in a lower gear at full throttle so let's break the news and just see whether whether or not this can make a difference for him yes, sir. right first observation okay uh, the fast left sweeper let's call it turn four what I'm seeing is that you're yeah. what you're doing is you're coming halfway off a throttle and staying at halfway for quite a long time and I'll okay. send you I'll send you a screenshot of what I mean on on uh, discord in fact I'll do that now That's exactly what we're talking about, Mr. Messer. Is that sometimes you don't think to try because you don't think it's going to stick. Um, okay. So we are... I'm going to screenshot that whole thing because it, it's, it's much quicker for me to just clip it and send it to him than to... than him to look at the same session I'm looking at or or share my screen it's just a pain so I want to highlight the throttle and highlight the gears and then copy and paste alright so there's a screenshot in discord now Let me know when you can see it. You can see it now, yeah. Yeah, so I've had a flick back through a few of your laps, and the big difference is that you're the blue line, I'm the red dotted okay. line. So this is the turn four fast left sweeper, the one that you, that you say feels a little bit sketchy. Okay. The big difference here is that you're going through it in fifth habitually. I'm sort of going it going through it in fourth, but I'm also putting more throttle in. Our steering angle is almost identical, so there's nothing wrong with why you're approaching it. You're doing it really smooth. Well, what I think is happening is because you're in a higher gear and you're only at half throttle, which is what you would expect to do to keep the back end stable. Yeah. I think it needs a bit more throttle to actually stick at that speed because it's a higher speed. It's not sticking enough. So the next time you go through that after the tyres are warmed up and it's and it's baked in try going for it in well try going for it in fifth anyway but also try putting more throttle on and see what you get so not necessarily full throttle even though the telemetry says that you can do that because that's what I do in a lower gear nonetheless just okay. try try using more throttle through that fast sweeper because I think 50% might might still be applying a form of engine braking right okay I see what you mean so, so you that just need a bit that more engine oomph. Braking is, that engine braking is creating additional rotation is it which I don't want I guess I would say that's what it looks like to me because you're saying that's, that corner is fairly sketchy yeah whereas after a little bit of getting the hang of the McLaren it feels solid now but it's almost as if you kind of have as with a McLaren all the time and, and cars like this it's about confidence if you don't have the confidence to plant it when you need to that's when you end up having a bit of trouble so I think go through that corner and just give it a bit more bit more guns through it try it in fifth and try it in fourth as well because that's what I've been doing and it's okay. been working well like and was that was on the race setup wasn't it yeah same Is setup you... same everything okay um, should I switch to the race setup or should I stay on the quality one? Stay on the race one because the, the fuel load can can make things change. Um, okay. 
plus the quality setup. If you if you end up in a good flow, you have to pit and it breaks that flow. So stay in the race setup. Okay, race setup. And you haven't adjusted the brake bias or anything for yours? Um, I think I've clicked it forward a, a couple of clicks, but it ha it doesn't it doesn't really come into play here. There's a short yeah. there's a short stab of brake on my side for that corner, but I think that's more of a confidence tap than anything else. I don't think you need to to brake for that corner at all. Okay. But I'll, what I'm uh, but what I am seeing is is that uh, it might come into it because you're not you're not braking at all, but you're also coming off a throttle um, earlier and staying off it for longer. So in a nutshell, go through that corner again and give it more throttle. I'll have to definitely. Yeah, just g you give it a shot. Again now. <laughs> in my own head, the logic works out. Somehow, I think it works out. But okay, basically, engage bravery mode. Yeah, fifty percent. I don't think is enough to to satisfy the um, engine braking and cancel it out at that speed. Through the little tyre chicane, now that would be enough in first gear. Right. Okay. Um, I'll uh, I'll warm the tyres up and then try it for a few laps. Yeah, get cosy. Yeah, the um the coaching you gave me around Sebring actually really helps. It looked like track. it. Did you did you come furl on that race or something like that? Remind me. Uh, I won it that one, I think. I think I won oh, Sebring. Real. Yeah, no, I feel really, really confident around Sebring. Well, this is even worse than the Porsche. Yeah, well, it's a lot of on-off throttle here, isn't there? And it's just, yeah, the Porsche was hard to drive. I shouldn't have chosen it, really. Not for my, um, not for my skill level. Too hard a car to keep consistent. It requires a lot of balls. Basically, it's one of it's like I say, different shoes fit different people. You can uh, get cozy with any car, but it just takes you longer, and you might not be as consistent. It's really hard to unwind driving habits that don't really do any harm. They're just not appropriate for the car. Yeah, gotcha. Basically, fourth gear nearly flat, like the tiniest yeah. little lift, and it went round okay. Yes, um, it's usually screaming at the top of fourth for me, almost. It feels so long ago now. I'm just coming up to it myself now, so I'll remind myself. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, that works. That was flat. You know, it's just one end. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think to, to attack it harder because it's, it's already loose. So why would attacking it even harder help? But that's yeah, just I how. Yeah, I was thinking if I balance, try and balance it more, 
it would be safer, but it's actually not. Ah, I just got my first McLaren bike. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Lethal. Yeah, and you can't catch it, that's the trouble. When it really yeah. wants to go, it just goes. I saw the, I saw the spin out of Road America, and it's basically a carbon copy of that. Yeah, not fun. I think it's probably one of the best sounding cars on iRacing. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier. But it's, it's got a lovely tubular sound. Very yeah, distinct. It just, sounds like, just sounds like it wants to go, you know? Yeah, there's nothing else quite like it. Question is, I mean, if you if you flick back through your lap times, let's let's do some tandem running again because your ultimate pace is really good because you know this car well now. Yeah. Um, take the lead, and let's see if there's any obvious kind of consistent bits where you can improve because sometimes it's easy just to look at the car in front of you and look at the telemetry. Yeah, sounds good. As well as identifying any obvious places where you might get overtaken. This is your outlap, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What's your uh, IR sitting at these days, Danny? It's hovering around 4K. 4K. Nudged, nudged four and a half, and I was in the radicals. That, like I said, that. That glove really did fit me well. Mate, Love the that's radicals. Borderline, that's borderline alien status. Over 3k. It's, it's just something about the radicals. Love it. But I've not Love raced it. them in ages. When we get the other uh, track car done, you'll have to come and do a test day with us. That yeah, would be a pleasure. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll set it up with Alex. Come and thrash it around. What's the track near you? Donnie or Donington's Donny near. near. Silverstone's fairly near, but that's a bit too big really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll go to Donny quite a lot, so I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Indeed, my ears will be open. That, that would be good. Yeah, the car's nearly finished. I've seen bits and bobs news and that. They're do, doing really well. Yeah, it's been a big process. What's your optimal down to? Uh, 131.9. What's yours, like a 128 or something stupid? <laughs> Are you ready to be <laughs> surprised? Come on. 32.1. 32.1? I think you've got to recognise that the McLaren might actually be your thing here because it's absolutely, like I said, ultimate pace is great. Idiot drivers need only apply. You say you're leading the AM class at the minute? Yeah, by six points, I think. It's no surprise. What I'm seeing is, um, is distinctly good. Well, I have a guess what my I rating is, Danny. 
Um, 1.7. <laughs> Good guess. Uh, I saw it on the um, on the race lab apps when I minimised it, so I'm kind of cheating. I think my highest ever is 21.50. If it was a McLaren Cup, I think you'd be doing alright. I wouldn't have the time to do this on an ongoing basis. And you got you got to stick to what you know. Yeah, true. But it's like I said, um, I don't have to do anything with Dean anymore. He just turns up and drives in his his barefoot, bare, Dean, barefoot, no rig. Yeah, he's racing on the Monday nights. Making me feel a bit of nostalgia from the Apex uh, I know, yeah. GTE days. It's probably for the best that GTE's died now. Yeah, I agree. Ish. It's just making a lot of people mad. It's just the trouble. But anyway, that's another that's another topic. Right, at this point, I'm just gonna, just gonna try and overtake you, essentially, and this is unfiltered now. This is me basically treating you like anybody else. Well, that doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't count because you had a little bit of a wiggle then. But, yeah, no, bring your, bring your, pace up, is, your pace is super strong. I think you'll be onto a good one here. I've noticed you're just getting good exits. It's just the mid corner that I found is really sketchy. But that could be that could be me lifting off too much, though. You know, like you were saying, I could yeah. be lifting a bit too much, and therefore there is potential for that. But it's something to watch out for because the dynamics change when you're in higher gears and higher speeds. Even lifting on, even lifting off a little bit when you're going at in fourth, fifth gear, top of fourth and fifth, constitutes engine braking. mostly where I was finding the problems. Yeah, but Chicane is an absolutely, um, that's one of your strong sectors. I cannot catch you there. And the telemetry backs it up. I find the, the turning point for this one I'm getting wrong a little bit. Yeah, it's an horrible I've corner, that. Yeah, you got to be more patient before you turn right. I like your line through here though, I've kind of copied that. It's kind of tight, as if it's, you know, there's no need for a race in line almost. Yeah. Ooh, that was me overcooking that then. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty sketchy. Yeah. Trying 
trying to force the error. There is no error for you there. That's a really strong sector for you. That's good because people go through it quite slowly normally. Oh, what's an error there though? The thing about you is you, you're probably going to need to capitalise on that chicane and make sure there's a gap between you and the car in front before you go into it because I reckon that's one of your strongest sections. Yeah, I don't want to run into the back of somebody. Oh, he's leaving the door a bit. Oh! <laughs> Just having a little nibble. I feel like I'm starting to understand that corner a bit now as well. Oh yeah. Somebody, I mean, if that was a race, would you give that up? Yeah. If somebody did the answer, yeah, then I, you can't really help that. But if somebody looks like they're going to threaten you into that, you can occupy the middle of the road and put them off it. So long as you feel like you're happy to take that corner whilst yeah. you're in the middle of the road almost. So that might be one worth doing because I've, I've noticed that's one of the areas where I do gain on you is, is um, exit of turn two. Oh, concentrate. Through there, that's so good. Well, see, see where you gain, you'll be surprised. Turn two is definitely an that's definitely an area that can be improved. Yeah, you're carrying a lot more speed than I am around there. It's got a lot of torque, hasn't it? This. Yeah, that's what I mean. It really pulls out of the corners for rear-wheel drive, and the front feels quite nimble on it. The thing I'm noticing is you're braking for quite a lot of the corners. You're braking earlier than I am, but carry more speed. So you're just braking more gently, I guess? That's what it will be. Yeah, you're definitely braking earlier than me. Right. Take the lead again. Okay. So I'm going to hang left here. Yeah, I'm on your right. So now just try and sit in the middle of the road for this, because this will be one of the areas where somebody might attack you if they happen to just be better. So occupy in the middle. I suppose if the track isn't <laughs> wide enough for it to track ain't wide enough for it to actually be a middle. So yeah, just. They're not going to overtake you on the outside. Yeah, they're really. not going to overtake you on the outside. So if you make your feelings known early and um, you want to broadcast it quite early so that they don't even think about it, nobody's yeah, going to, nobody's actually going to pull off an overtake on the outside there. We'll try, but the risk is all theirs if they hang outside of that. Mm -hmm. 
And because your chicane is very strong. Trying to around the outside. Gets it, nice one. There's not much you can do, I guess. The speed differential was quite. It allowed it to happen. Oh, he folded. Oh, sh <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna get it, that's gonna be it. Oh, this car makes you love it and hate it at the same time. Just get in the zone, don't you? And it starts to come alive, and then all of a sudden it's like, hang on a minute, stop having fun. Yeah. So let's let me take over into this next corner because what I want you to do is basically try and overtake on the exit of a chicane. Overtake on the oh okay yeah gotcha. Because it's that's where you're gonna end up catching a lot of people. I think we want to figure out when you do that if you don't practice having the inside for that chicane, you might overshoot. So I want you to basically draw alongside. Ooh, got a little bit green That's all right, no worries. We'll try next lap. Because okay. I know that if you're if you're behind me into that chicane, you will get enough of a gap to draw alongside. And if the people around you don't wake up to it and cover that inside, then that will be one of the ways you can bully somebody into letting you letting you go so do you mean pass going into the chicane or pass after coming the out of it the yeah coming oh, out okay. of it there's only a mild straight there but it is still long enough for you to get um a nose alongside You're quite good coming out of the, coming out of the last corner and all. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Yeah, you have such good grip around there. Damn it. Did that feel different, or did, was that just a landmine? I lifted. Ah. I yep. lifted coming towards the exit. So all, that was all on me, 100%. I've noticed that when I go into it, I do give it a bit of a cautionary tap on the brakes, but then I'm back on the throttle in a big way. So there's an initial dip just to get the car turned in, and then it's caught. But I'll uh, pit again, one sec. Okay. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah, it's all right, no worries fresh set it's a nice thing about doing it on the same you can go over the limit to find the limit right yeah, every time I go over the limit I get slapped in the face <laughs> somebody stands here and does it for me uh, now, I sh I'll let you go in front out of interest what bias are you currently running I am running uh, 49. 49 dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, one thing for sure is that it's it's rarely the braking that's the problem, is it? It's not a corner entry. It's usually mid corner with a McLaren. Yeah, I'm finding like I'm finding sort of like two thirds of the way round. I feel as if the weight gets quite heavy on the yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. And and it starts to make it feel like it's a, a bit of a pendulum motion. Yeah, absolutely. So I might look into a, a bit of a setup tweak because I know that it's it feels that way for me as well. Okay. It's almost as if I want I want it to be a bit more positive on corner entry, but more stable on the corner exit. Yeah, corner. Yeah, it's just that it's just that one corner really. Like the turn in and stuff feels lovely. Like the chicanes feel good because you can you can really dart the nose around quite a lot. Yeah. You know, it's not a lot of understeer with this car, which is quite nice. I mean, I don't know what you can 
I don't know the setup process that well, other than, you know, changing ride height for fuel load and that kind of thing. It's usually anti-roll bars and things like that that just make a big, big difference. All right, okay. Anti-roll bar is probably the biggest um, influencer on how a car feels. But you only know what you want after you've done a few laps, and I just think that the mid corner is a bit too sketchy. Yeah, because it's an endurance race is what I'm going to be pushing my tyres a bit. Yeah. And they position that nice big tyre wall, don't they, just after the corner. Yeah, it's easy to just stack them and that's it, race over. Well, yeah, I did it again, look. Effectively race over. Right, I'm going to take a look mm. at the set of N and I'll reshare it. Okay, Sam. Thank you. Basically, I'll give it, I'll give it kind of like my edit, ed, my director's cut, as it were, because I feel as though <laughs> it doesn't nice. feel very optimised to me. Uh, as in to to the way I sort of approach it, I'm finding that I'm having to sort of back off a little bit, uh, where I normally wouldn't. I know it's a McLaren, but it's not that far off your standard GT3, especially if you're used to driving Ferraris and whatnot. Yeah. Go so on, yeah. yeah, I'll return in a minute. Cheers, mate. All right. So we want to do a minor, a minor tweak or two to basically give the McLaren a bit more to try and take the edge off it a little bit, because maybe the reason why the Ferrari is is a good fit for me is because it's it's somewhat forgiving. The Ferrari is all about attack. And you've got to make sure the shoe fits you. So at the minute, Okay. Right, so I've only made one tweak. And I'll just have to see how big a difference it makes because you don't want to do anything too major. Right, let's see if this makes any difference. It's a very minor tweak, but. As I okay. say, anti-roll bars make a big difference. And it's really close, but just a little bit too sharp. If it was a 15-minute sprint or a 20-minute sprint or something, it might not yeah. be too bad. Yeah. Yeah, let's see what happens here. So I'm on race, race setup still. I'll watch you um, on board. Wow, okay. Yeah, you definitely break softer for longer. Like toilet roll. <laughs> yeah, a couple of Andrake's puppies under the pedal. I love that corner. 
All I want to do is make it a little bit more eager to turn in in the first half without being so lethal in the middle and the exit. Yeah. It just needs like a hint of spice taken out of it. Yeah, in the right place. Yeah. Still a little bit. Yeah, a bit loose. Yeah, and the trouble is when you've got the lighter fuel load and worn tyres towards the end of the race, it just becomes it becomes a bit more sketchy, you know. Okay, that fits me better and I'll tell you what I've changed. Okay. Because it might do the trick. So the, literally the only thing I've done to make it inspire a bit more confidence in me is I've clicked the front ARB up by one. It's currently two, I've just put it up to three. Right, okay, just raised it at one. Uh, um, yeah, just, just the front anti-roll bar, stiffen it by one click. And everything else is exactly the same, but to compensate for that, when I need it, I've dialed down the brake bias to 48%. Uh, so... Uh, front ARB arms, correct? Yeah, front ARB arms should be at two at the minute. Yeah, up to yeah, three. Click it up okay. to one, uh, click it up to three, so up by one, and that's it. Okay, let's give that a try. Now, I'm not exactly a setup professor, but I know full well that if you've got a car that is too easy to overturn, then making the front end stiffer changes that balance to take that edge off. You might find that now it's much more stable in the fast stuff, but it needs a little bit more effort to actually turn in the slow stuff, which is why I've um, wound the brake bias back to be a bit more aggressive because normally, uh, on this track at least, you're rarely ever trail braking into the really fast stuff. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So we just want to make it more confidence inspiring. It seems to work for me because that's four tenths off I've knocked. Four tenths, bloody hell, that's good. Yeah, that was uh, four. Four and a half attempts better than my previous best. 
and it felt better doing it. It didn't feel like it was on the edge. It's got more of a smoother turn in, it feels like. Yeah. Not quite as darty. And I guess that'll yeah. help in the in the higher speed corners. It will it the the best way to explain stiffen in the front ARB is it almost it limits the actual rate at which your car can is able to turn. So it's almost like it's saying, okay, you can turn that hard, but I actually want to put a cap on how hard it can turn. That means it's less it's less easy to fall into too much turning, which makes the car spin. You know, it sounds stupid, but it makes my wheel, it makes my DD2 actually feel heavier. Yeah, because there's a... Uh, well, I can't explain that, so I won't even try. I won't even try and blag it. But it does change the way the front end feels and the balance between the front and rear. But that's normally one of the things I go to to make a car more stable in certain areas. And in oh, high speed turns that. like that, yeah. If you clicked it up another one, you would really feel the effect because one click is not a great deal. But it wasn't that far off perfection to start with. It actually felt really good, but it just m made me feel a bit nervous sometimes. Yeah, it feels. Um, I mean, I still may crash there. You never know, but it uh, it felt better that time. Well, you know the moments that you get where you're sort of going mid midway through a corner, and it stealthily starts to lose the back end, and you don't realise it, and you try and catch it, and it just pings you the other way. Yeah, the McLaren special. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stiffen in the front ARB is basically the cure for that. The problem is it it deprives you of the very thing that makes the McLaren good and that's the front end right, but, gotcha. but every track needs a little bit of a different approach and for Alton you just need the confidence to go through the, the bits that are fast this feels a much much better to me even though that was just a, a really slight tweak yeah it definitely feels a bit more stable and if you found that you were understeering in the slow stuff well, you're normally trail raking for the slow stuff, so wind the brake bias back, and that should cure it. Oh, it's definitely better. Like, it's, uh, it doesn't try to float out now. Yeah. If he did another click up, it would, it would almost be uncrashable. <laughs> oh, God, don't say that. <laughs> you want, you'll uh, watch me back on the race on Tuesday. First corner, bang. Yeah. But it's, it's a quick and dirty way of making the car just a little bit less pointy. What do you reckon happened there then? Because I couldn't see, um, it wasn't close enough. I, uh, I didn't turn enough going into the first corner, so I've set my line for the second corner. Oh yeah, fair enough. <coughs> a bad case of the potholes. Yeah, a bad case of talking uh, too much and not concentrating on my line. Yeah, I'll catch you on the way around then. Okay. Come back to my relative. Feels like the diff could do with being played with as well because it does feel as though it's um, a little bit too eager to break loose on exit. And okay. you can, by changing the diff settings, you can make it more eager to turn off roll and less eager to get loose on throw. So it might there might be a tweak to be made there. But if you so don't have complaints the, about that. Is that the preload? Yeah, so the preloads would change it. I can't remember exactly what settings you have now, but at the minute it's quite high, which says that off throttle it's gonna be quite um I forget. But I know that at the minute you could change it in a big way and just see what happens and see if it fits the car better. Because at the minute I feel as though it's a little bit too... Uh, when it snaps, it snaps for me. Yeah. Yeah, it lets you know when you've gone over the limit. Yeah. Usually reducing the preload would make it easier to start snapping but not as harsh when it does. So you can almost modulate it a bit more. At least that's how it was when I last tweaked all these things. It's been a while since I had to do any kind of races with setups to worry about. 
Did you find as your um, I rating improved and your ability improved, you're able to use the sort of pro setups out of the box a little bit easier? Um, if that makes sense. Say that again. I think I, I must have jumbled that up in my head to make word soup. So if if you take a setup from say VRS yeah. or Apex or whoever, um, if you take one of their setups direct from how it comes from Apex or VRS, whatever, do you find you're not having to change as much because your ability is higher now? It's a, it's a funny one. I usually try each of the setup shops because it's and because different people do the setup sometimes you just think that a particular person setups just fit you well I remember I had I had that with um, Craig's setup shop somebody was doing the setups for that for a particular car I can't remember which one now but they, they just fit me a lot better they were just always a couple of attempts quicker but usually you try each setup shop, see which one fits you better, and then you learn how you yourself can make even more time out of it by tweaking it to you. So, back in ARL GT days, I'd normally take a pure driving school setup, and then maybe kind of make it a little bit less, a little bit less two feet. So I'd calm okay. it down a bit, and it would still be quicker than the equivalent setups. This um this change you've made is much better. Like it just feels it's brought a bit of confidence back, you know? Yeah, it's that's one of the go to things. If I want to calm a car down because confidence is the confidence makes you faster than anything does. If you want to calm a car down you either add more wing, which we which we don't do, it's already at max. Lower the rear ride height, which I don't think will be a good option here because of all the bumps and curves or you just stiffen the front ARB to kind of it's almost like you're tying one hand behind the back of the front end of the car by making it less strong right gotcha and it's like it's like a tug of war between the front and rear and if you make the front a little bit weaker it won't be so eager to turn the car around all the time but it, it feels a little better on the brakes as well it's a bit weird, like the... Did you did you um, scale the brake bias back? No, I didn't, no. Uh, so you're still running like 59? Uh, 49, I think it is. Uh, 49, yeah, 49, yeah. yeah, fair enough. I'm not sure of any of that case. It might, be, it might even be track usage or just getting used to it. Or the confidence of generally having a car that doesn't want to throw you off means you feel better about braking harder. Yeah, not so worried about the back end uh, coming out on its own. Yeah. From the from the trail braking rotation. Yeah, I I definitely like this. This feels like a like a a different animal from from the um, the stock setup. Yeah, definitely. Well, my optimals come down, so it can't be can't be all bad. Yeah, it doesn't want to step out there either, which is nice. Gives you a bit more control. Yeah, it feels good, man. You definitely know your stuff. Well, it's it's a, it's it's right there. It's right under everybody's nose. But unless you knew, you'd never think. You'd think lower the ride height or add more wing or whatever, but it all depends on what you wanna what you wanna change about it. It feels good in the slow stuff, but it feels too sharp in the high speed stuff. Yeah, like just then I was a bit aggressive on the throttle and that in the old setup would have been death. And there's more that you can do on that as well. If you happen to find that corner exits were just too sketchy, then you maybe would do something with rear ride height or the diff, but it's in a pretty good place. Corner exit is not usually the trouble here. It's always mid-corner. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely calmed it down. It's taken that, uh, taken that spice out. I'm liking it. So just as an experiment, I mean, because obviously... 
you know now France ARB is a good go-to to calm the car down a bit in high-speed stuff and just generally if you did another click you another would see that yeah, an yeah another another click up on the front ARB or two clicks even just to go to the extreme okay I'll give it a try because the rear ARB is also quite stiff but it's you can do changes at both ends if you soften the rear ARB then that will also do the same thing as strengthening the front ARB in terms of shifting the balance but Alton has got lots of left right flicks and stuff it's not the right track to be doing it whereas Watkins Glen you would want to focus on the rear ARB because you're not swinging it left and right constantly gotcha. I'll just have a look at the um, I'll try a change in the diff preload next and just see if that makes a big difference to corner exit Okay, I'm going to try the ARB on five just for just for um, just for kicks. Just for kicks, that's it. Yeah, I was going to say for S's and giggles, but you know. Yeah. <sighs> Got to keep the stream PG. It's funny isn't it? how your how your brain just knows. If I wasn't streaming, I'd be I'd be I'd be Jeffing everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got Kev Copeland in your chat, so. Yeah, tell, Kev I say, tell Kev I say hi. I think he's still hanging around. I gotta have a chat with all the Evo boys at some point. I haven't spoke to them in ages. <laughs> this is this is basically uncrashable. Yeah, uncrashable but also slow. Yeah. Um. Whereas it, it's. It's also probably worth if you click it back down to two, which is what it was when it first started. Oh god, yeah. It doesn't want to turn. Yeah. It broke my thumb. <clears throat> so as a rule Let's try it down at two. Again. Yeah, try the front ARB at two, but then try clicking down twice on the rear ARB. So it should be at seven at the minute. Try it on five. Uh, because it should have a similar yeah. effect, but at a price. So, sorry, set the rear to. Set the rear ARB to five. To five, okay. Let's just see if this makes much of a difference. Get out of the grass, come on. doesn't feel as nice somehow. It's a bit floppier, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't feel Because obviously, precise. the anti oil bars are weaker on both sides now than they were when the ARB was, click ARB was clicked up. Uh, okay, so I guess it's getting more rear pitch then? Yeah. Or more rear, more rear roll? More rear roll side to side, but uh, essentially it means that the stiffer the rear ARB, the more readily it sort of gives way, which is something that you might want at high speed when you're going through fast corners. You know, if you've got an understeery car. Like I said, I'm no expert, but I know what I would tweak to make a car sort of behave in a certain way. But keep going with it because you may find that in some areas it's faster, but it just doesn't feel as good. Yeah, it's definitely a bit quicker, but it feels scary. Yeah. Well, not not scary, but not as balanced, you know. 
Not as predictable. Oh, blimey. We're going to have to put them tyres back. Did you have a collision? Yeah, that tyre chicane. Yeah. I never hit the one on the left. I always hit the one on the right. I'd say that... I'd be happy with the uh, the tweaked setup. Just one click up in the ARB. I think that's done the trick. Yeah, it feels as good as this one. But it has the confidence there as well. This has got a slight more front turning. But it's not worth the sacrifice of the feel, I don't think. Yeah. Well, there you have it then. So it's... Something that you can carry across to other tracks as well. So if a McLaren feels a bit, bit, bit dicey. Yeah, well that's basically every setup that comes out for the McLaren. Yeah, I'd imagine. Right, I'm just uh, rejoining the track. Okay. And I'll just try and do an overtake again. Just to yeah, see if there's good. anything that, that, that we can do there. Trying to get me blooming. Oh, there it is. There we are. Oh no. Oh, the windows have done something. Oh no. As in the actual windows, not the PC windows. Oh no, not actual windows, because that means literal glass. Eye racing just minimised because I um, had the audacity to try and put Streamlabs up. Oh, well, never mind. We just have to do about it. Oh, I'm on my way. Okay, we'll Actually, no, carry on, because I've just realised that I'm still on the wobbly low ARB setup. Uh, I am also. I need to come back and change it anyway. Yeah. I need to change it back to the uh, one click ARB. So ARB 3, 49% brake bias, rear ARB is 7. Yeah. I racing, you're so blooming fussy. Right, back on. So let's do a, pro a proper little run now then. We've uh, okay. made some progress there. Oh, you're already out. Oh, I'm on my way. Yeah, I'm only just at the exit. Okay, go for it. Definitely a car length in there. Why in braking or in uh, to pass? When you exit, you're making a car length up on me. Ah, I see. So oh, you, that shit. is that would be a good time to strike. Okay. So long as you don't end up nose to tail with the guy in front through that chicane.
sector. Thanks. There's another like car lane right there. Yeah, it does snag, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh blimey! <laughs> that was that was harsh. Yeah, I I totally had to let go of the wheel <laughs> then for fear of breaking arms. Yeah, I was just thinking that. So Damn the it. the question is then, if you push oh, hard, yeah, if you push hard and you crack, you want to figure out why that is. So do, do you do you think you did anything different there that that you might do if you were on your own? So obviously you, you lost it through that turn, so was it the case that you might have been reverting back to cautiousness causing more trouble than it solves? I think I went too much on the inside ah, of, yeah. the, of the line. But you were still punching the throttle quite hard for it? Yeah, and then because yeah, it, cause when you go through there it sort of like pushes you out, doesn't it, towards the yeah. fire wall? And then instead of just kind of staying with it and thinking, oh, it will come back, I then started yeah. to panic, thinking it's not going to come back. So I naturally just sort of lifted, thinking that's what I needed yeah. to do. Yeah. It's it's counterintuitive. Yeah. It's Try be again. Practice. Try again, because I need to actually be putting the pressure on to make you kind of do what you would do in a race. Oh, yeah, 100%. At least you know where your trouble area is going to be. Well, the race will be fine because I won't be worrying about any 4K AMs behind me, so... Well, they're, some of them are even worse. <laughs> yeah, that is true. But when I'm when I'm sort of peeking out from behind you, it's actually just to get my brake markers and, well, just to orientate myself with where I am. Setup definitely feels better though. Yeah, agreed. I certainly like it a lot more. It feels a lot more less. Um, feels more Ferrari. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I was thinking the same thing. Your setup model is Ferrari the world. Yeah. If it if it takes up Ferrari, then I'm all right. <laughs> if it's here, yeah, it tastes like horse. If it tastes like horse meat, So are you good? No damage? I accelerate a bit. Yeah, there we go. Smooth. Yeah, no no damage, just my pride. Never lost it there before. No. It's good though that you're putting the pressure on because it shows where I've got to be more careful. Yeah, because sometimes you, you only really get one chance to do it in a race. 
Well, you don't really get any chances if you do it once you're knackered. Yeah. I'm normally fairly consistent. Normally. Which probably means I'm slow. It's just that little 5% overstep sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. Nearly tried. <laughs> I thought you were going to go for it. It should have sent it. I'd have given you some room. I was only just hanging on to it. That's a good couple of car lengths right there. just a walk in the park for you. you no, I've been me. going. I've been going full pelt. If I wanted to get past you. Oh, I am. Pace is really good here. Now that the consistency is there as well and the confidence. Your experience really counts here. When you yeah, get to an error car, it's brilliant. Quite liberal with my line then. I saw you. You took the uh, the grassy knoll. Oh shit! Ship. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh ship! Just double down. Hello, doggy. Must have been something I ate. No room at the inn. That sort of situation, I guess, is um, if you know you've been, if you know you've sort of snagged your jeans pocket on the door handle as you came out that corner, and you know that the guy behind is going to set you up for a, for like a pass. Broadcast your move earlier than that. That was good. That's what I'm talking about. Coming out of that chicane, you will get past people that way. Yeah. So the next time you go to that corner, just imagine there's a car there, even when there, even when there isn't one. 
take the sort of middle inside line and just make sure you can nail that breaking point every time. And also, there might be a car blocking your vision on the left hand side of a track anyway. So next time we go past that chicane, I'm going to block the left line and your vision. And you just got to do okay. the same thing that you just did then. Because that, that did take me by surprise, I wasn't expecting it. And you just made it stick. Didn't overshoot it or anything. Uh, there was a guess on the braking marker, that's the only thing. Well, you guessed right. But if you guess wrong, you'd know to practice it. But if you nail it, that will be one of your best moves. Okay. Go through the chicane as quick as you can. Okay. That's it. Twice in a row. You just got you've got that nailed. So, awesome. so if you happen to find yourself provided the guy ahead is aware and I'm pretty sure that with your pace you'll be tucked in with the pro-ams and the pros anyway um, they should be aware that you're coming but they might also cover the inside line if they do there's not really much you can do so you're going to have to rely on people either not thinking to even cover it In which case, all you can really do is just keep the pressure on them until they make a mistake and be ready to seize it. And that chicane is so tricky. They're not going to nail it all the time, so just be ready to pounce when they when they do uh, mess it up. Yeah, just know that that's a good opportunity. Yeah, and rely on them not being able to perceive a breaking point for that chicane as well as you can. I'm talking about the second one, the one where you actually made your moves last lap. Because if they're on the inside, then they have to get it right as well. And if they don't do it as right as you do, you can take them on the outside as well. Yeah. Oh, that was slick. Oh, that was a gentleman's agreement there. That's what I mean. If you know you, if you know you can trust them, then you can you can make a lot of moves work. But that that one only happened because you gave me the in, the um, the outside line. Yeah. It's normally I, I, normally you want to guard the inside line, but oh, hang on, just going a bit off road. That's quite smooth, all things considered. Normally you want to protect the inside line, but Alton's a bit weird in this in this regard. It ain't always where you want to be. Yeah, it's got some weird some weird setups, some weird corners. So if you give somebody the outside line and they sort of find themselves trying to make the best of it, it just works. It seems to work, but only because they can trust you to not run wide yourself. You're just going to have to go with the flow, I guess, on the, the other corners. Yeah. What gear are you taking this in? 
Normally, um, normally I'm clicking it down to first because okay, I'm yeah, I'm always too. a bit more comfortable being in first and modulating the throttle than being in second and kind of coasting through. Oh, oh, oh. oh blimey! Yeah, welcome to the McLaren. I think it's trying to tell me something. <laughs> yeah. So you, need to, you need to race in a championship. Yeah. The thing is, that kind of incident, I knew it was happening, but my head didn't really do anything to stop it. That's, yeah. just, that's just being greedy, and you do tend to be more greedy in practice than you do in a real race. I would never step that, that close to the line if it mattered. But you know yeah. it is. You know, you know when, a, when a spin happened through no fault of your own, and you know when it happened because you just got a bit greedy, and that was, that was me then. But I think... When is the when is the next round? Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Okay. Well, I think even though there hasn't been massive tweaks, definitely um, confidence built. Yeah, no, I'm probably really talking it, probably talking more about me than you at this point because I feel as if uh, McLaren was um, a complete stranger to me when I joined up. Now it sort of feels a bit like home just because of that one little tweak. Yeah, it, well, it's good to know that you can jump into it, do that, and then it's yeah. going to be, you know, going to be safe. Yeah. What was your optimal in the end? Optimal is 31.5. Oh, mine's 31.6, so I can't complain at that. Exactly. The pace is there. You've you've really got this this McLaren down well. Awesome. Yeah, better than the uh, better than the Porsche. Well, it's it took a lot. It took probably a lot just more work with the Porsche. Probably just. Um, the shoe fitted. Yeah, definitely. I'll bring it back to the pits. Yeah, nice cool down. Yeah, I need to cool down, bloody hell. Same here. I, d I, I dare not even lean forward in the seat because I know, even though the aircon's been on, and that thing, I don't know where I'd be without it. I just yeah, know that I'm going to need a, I'm going to need just to pop in the pop in the bath or something with a cup of tea after this. Like a distinguished gentleman. <laughs> That's one thing that I've noticed as well. The pit speed limit is 50. Yeah. Very, very low. And the entry okay. seems to be quite wild as well. So you could, if you had a good marker, that's worth practicing. Yeah. Yeah, I will practice that when I, um, when I do the official session. No, that's epic. I don't think that VRS is going to tell us much, much useful things at this stage because your pace itself is fine. It's just about making it easier to hit every corner more accurately, so you got more consistency. Yeah, yeah. If I your optimal like was way time. off, then I'd be looking at it, but it's not. It's right on the money. No, that's awesome. Well, it's good to run with somebody that is higher speed because obviously, if you run with people that are faster, you get faster, don't you? You know. Well, I've learned a thing or two from from uh, the way you've done a few corners on this. So, two is always better than one, even if it's just. Um, well, doesn't matter who it is. Two is always yeah, better than one. I thought I you had a crash here. Yeah, <laughs> I I taught you a few things there and all. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, thanks, uh, thanks again, Danny. I'll um I'll let you uh, yeah. let you get off. No, no worries. Same. Same again. Um, I really appreciate it. No worries at all. It's a pleasure, and it it, it it reminds me just to keep it sharp as well. And uh, yeah, best sure. of luck for Tuesday. That should be good. Yeah. Cheers, mate. I really appreciate it. I'll Have a good I'll, day. I'll definitely be watching to see what happens. If you end up getting binned off in in lap one by by somebody else, then um, commiserations. You're putting a protest for me. <laughs> yeah. Have a look. At, <laughs> have a little flick through the VRS anyway, because there might be something in there that makes you think because although our optimals are similar there could be laps whereby I'm taking two chunk I'm taking two temps out of a particular corner whereas you're also taking those two temps back from me which means our optimals are the same but have a look there are definitely corners that I could do faster consistently like turn two yeah the, the early left sweep of that one I felt was was um was a an area where I could gain on you every time and I can see now that I'm on the throttle earlier 
Um, my steering's a bit more aggressive, and my okay. line seems to be a, a bit closer as well. Have a look. It's worth having a look through. If you want to make it count, you might get a 10.42 just by picking up a good habit there. So, yeah, I can see my line is, is tighter than, than yours is, at least on the lap yeah. I'm looking at. But, yeah, bon voyage. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. In a bit, Tom. Layers. See you, buddy. Bye, bye, bye. Right. This concludes my TED talk. Um, Tom's going to be doing that Alton round in on Tuesday. And um, I got to be blunt. His his pace is his pace in that McLaren is is, is really uh, well seasoned. I'm trying to jump. You, you never assume that that experience doesn't count. He's comfortable with that. But we have that with that McLaren now. He's done a few rounds in it, a few one-hour races in the um, Apex Racing League GT Trophy. So on Tuesday night he'll be doing that. I'll be tuning in just to see how how that one goes. I recommend you do as well. And if it, if you like the look of it, you can take part in it. So keep an eye out. Go and look at his channel as well. Uh, Performance Link Esports. And uh, give him a chat as well. I will leave you guys to enjoy your evenings. And I'm going to go put the kettle on, obviously. Cheers, Tom. Cheers, all viewers. And uh, see you again on Monday for the next sim, uh, next SGN GT3 League race. Laters.